And welcome to Headway Art Space. You are in Blythe's uh, new venue. We have just started to work on our lovely new art centre, a uh, centre for arts and social inclusion. So it's our 21st birthday year this year. We've been around a, a long time. We, we feel like we've just come of age. We've moved into this new space and we're undertaking this ambitious but we think very worthwhile project here in Blythe. Um, I'd just like to kick it off with a, a quote from an author called Ursula Gwynn. I don't know if anyone's read her work, but she's a favourite of mine. But what she says is that 21, there's a point around the age of 21 when you have to choose whether to be like everyone else the rest of your life, or you have to make a virtue of your peculiarities. We like to make a virtue of our peculiarities here at Tedley Arts because we welcome everyone. It doesn't matter who they are or where they're from, and that is what we do with our work here. We include everyone, or we aim to. If we're not including everyone, we'd like them know, and we'd like people to tell us how they would like to be included or who they think has been missed out of the work. I also thought, well, if I'm going to say the word peculiar, I need to work out actually what peculiar really means. And what it said in the dictionary was that it can mean strange. And often strange is about the unknown. And we found through our European work that actually strangers don't become so strange once you get to know them. And that's a really important message we believe, not just for across Europe, but across the world or every human being. As soon as you get to know each other, you realise what you've got in common. The other definition of peculiar was also belonging. A place to belong. And that's one of the things we tried to create wherever our work is, whether it's in this building or whether it's in some of the outreach work that we do around the country and around Europe. What we want is for people to feel that they belong somewhere, that they belong to something. And that can be about friendship, it can be about a place, it can be something that they don't necessarily see. So through the arts, we want everyone to feel that they belong. So I'd like to welcome you all to the space and um, what we're going to look at today, because this is the first of our 21 events celebrating our 21st birthday year. So there's going to be lots of things happening, lots of arts actions and all sorts of things that we're going to do across the year. But today is the launch of our European project, our arts project, our Alternative Routes to Success project. So to help us with that, we've invited Jude, Jude Curtin Darling, who's our MEP, and we're really delighted that she's had time in our busy schedule to come and see us here in Lottie and bring our team down. So it's great to see you all. Thank you. And what we're going to do is ask Jude to come up and say a few words. And then Paula is going to help Jude to begin our project by making a symbolic gesture. And Jude's going to begin our wish tree and tie a ribbon on the tree. We're going to help her with that, but not yet, Paula. So I'll tell you when. So Jude. I'll hand over to you. Well, um, good afternoon, everybody, and thanks very much for the invitation to come, Alison. I mean, I, I've been elected now for um, 18 months, and the day after I was elected, um, somebody came up to me and said, you've got to talk to Headway Arts in Bly because they're doing brilliant things. And we've been in contact right from the beginning. This is the first time that we've managed to coordinate ourselves to be um, here. But uh, but it's your reputation and your work really does travel across Europe, but it also travels across the UK. And the arts and the culture sector in the UK consider Headway to be one of the, the great examples. So I think that's a tribute to all of you and all of you who are involved, all of you who work here. Um, and it's a really nice thing to be here at the beginning of the 21st year, to be able to, to be part of this, so I really appreciate it. And your 21st year and this European project um, are really important uh, to us as your MEPs because 
this year we'll also be deciding whether we take an alternative route as a country um, and whether we leave the European Union and for the um, Labour Party or um, the Labour MP we will be campaigning to stay inside uh, the European Union and primarily for reasons like what's going on inside this uh, I think it's a brilliant building, a brilliant space um, because there'll be lots of reasons that people put out into the press, lots of statistics, statistics about trade, statistics about jobs, there are thousands of jobs across the northeast that are dependent on our EU membership. But fundamentally, one of the key things about being part of the EU is about people working together, understanding each other better, trying to learn about each other, making strangers friends, learning what makes us different, what makes us the same, um, and how we can move forward. Because at its base, the European Union is a peace process. It came out of uh, of centuries of war across Europe, where the people of Europe fought each other every 20 years. We as a region in the Northeast have delivered many young uh, people into the battlefields of Europe. And now we don't fight on battlefields. We talk to each other across negotiation tables, like I do in the European Parliament every week. But also we talk to each other as people in projects like this, working with similar groups um, in different countries. So that your work is actually a really basic part of what makes the European Union so important. And the project um, that is starting and being launched today is being financed by one of the big programs that we as MEPs have created. It's called Erasmus Plus. And it's a pot of money which will be spent from 2014, so a little bit back to 2020, about 14 billion euros. It's a lot of money. And that money is about bringing people together to support training, to support learning, to support arts and culture and youth work across Europe. And we know that our youth work in the UK has been hit very hard by um, government cuts. And that European money, which is coming into communities to support um, community work, is really important um, for the future. So this is all about the quality of our relationship with our European partners. Um, and I like to think that it's, it's a question of building friendships and building relationships which can bind us together in a way um, down the line into the future. And ensuring that people have opportunities, people have the opportunity to grow and to flourish. Like you said, we are all peculiar. Um, very few people want to be a politician. I can understand why now, now that I've become <laughs> elected. But we are all peculiar. We should all be allowed to grow, to flourish, to live. Um, in, in the way that we, we like. And projects like this are really crucial to achieve that. So I'm just thrilled to be here. Um, we back you up as much as we can. Um, anything that you, you need from us, we're, we're willing to, to support you with. And, um, and I hope this year is a year of, of real success and maybe a kind of new branches off the tree of headway arts and new growth, which will um, lead you into your 22nd, 23rd, 24th, 25th year um, of, um, of development. So crucial for Bly and so crucial, like I said, for the whole of the European Union. So thank you very much for being part of that. <laughs> so Paula McLean is one of our actors. And she's gonna show you the so I'll just leave it over to Paula. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Do I get to pick? Yeah. Any? Any Just one or more? Okay. Okay, well, pink it will be. <laughs> and that? Thank you. 
So um, thanks, Jude, for that for those great words. That's brilliant. Thank you very much. It's much appreciated. And we've got lots of people in the room who have been really supportive. And um, that's, we can't do what we do without all of you people who do support us. So thank you very much. Um, so now um, I'm going to go through the, um, the business of the project. So we've got... Um, all the understandings of actually what we are doing with this work. So the partnerships, we've come across the partnerships. Um, so we are working in adult education, we're working in lifelong learning, so that means lots of opportunities for people throughout the whole of their lives to learn and to grow. Um, this is what we call a cooperation project, so we're working with partners across Europe, so we're working with um, Teatro Nucleo in Italy, in Ferrara. We're working with Antigone in Greece. We're working with Kagami in Santiago de Compostela. And we're working with Medlefors Volkskolen in Sweden, in Schleftio. The next slide, please. So the objectives of this project are to give recognition to the achievements of people who are disadvantaged through disability. We're creating a new accreditation framework work with a toolkit which is accessible. The idea of the work is that people get involved in our creative work all of the time. But what we want to do is look at ways that that work can be recognised for people. So we're looking at ways of accrediting that work. So instead of people coming along and not being able to explain what they've done, we're looking at clear ways of helping people to understand exactly what they've learned through the work that they've done. So we're looking at developing evaluation and self-evaluation techniques. So it's not about looking at lots of paperwork, it's about thinking about what we're doing and thinking of practical ways of understanding what you've actually learned. We're going to do that through providing training for adult education staff. So the people who will be involved in the project are all people who are working with groups in community education across Europe. And we, the idea is that we'll look at improving their skills so that they can work with people that they work with on a day-to-day -day basis in a much stronger and richer way. We want to use this work to raise the profile of disadvantaged adults locally, regionally and nationally. So it's really important to us that the achievements of the people we work with are seen and understood. So we're going to do this through methodology, through great events and workshops and activities across Europe. People have been practical experience through these workshops and a knowledge of current practice. So we're going to look at what everyone's doing. We're going to look at the work within the organisations. So we'll all be working as individual organisations on project work within our host countries. And then we'll be sharing that knowledge across Europe. We'll do that through transnational learning activities in each partner. So we'll explore different strands of accreditation. We'll look at different ways of doing it. 
and valuation. Again, we look at different ways of doing that, but particularly looking at the value of techniques that are very accessible and very inclusive. So they're not about having strong literacy skills, they're not about uh, writing essays and writing what you've learned, we're looking at techniques that are really uh, accessible and, and creative. So we're going to be running a series of seminars, practical creative workshops, skill shops, focused conversations and evaluations. What we mean by that is we're going to try lots of different things. We're going to try lots of ranges of, of, of things that other people can be involved in as well. So some of yourselves might like to be involved in some of that work. We're going to engage disadvantaged people in organic learning processes. Now I said organic to someone the other day, like, what do you mean by that? And what that means is we're going to follow the strengths that people have. We're going to look at what comes out of people and we're going to look at how that can develop in a very natural way. We're not going to force that process, but we're going to encourage it for it. We're looking at evaluating methodologies that allow people to see progress so through that organic process. We're going to be looking at actually where people, where people get to and where we think we can go. And we're going to look at the steps that people need in order to progress and, and identify what those things actually might be. And after we've done all of that, we're going to put that in an accreditation framework. So we're going to make recommendations and we're going to identify points and principles in our framework so that we can apply that as a universal thing across Europe. So, from that, project outcomes will be development and accreditation, and that it will recognise the learning of disadvantaged adults in the arts and also through the arts. There are lots of benefits of that. And it will also be equal in mainstream applications. So it will have status and it will be something that is recognisable. So people will be able to say, yes, I've done this work and I've got this qualification from it. And that qualification will be transferable to other, other parts of um, other accrediting works. So in the UK, once we've published that online and also in all the languages in the past, in the UK, we will adopt it here at Henry Arts and it will be credited to awards. Now, we just become a one award centre, so we are now what we call an open college here as well. So, we're doing lots of different strands of work as part of the whole work at Henry Arts, and that's a real development for us. We're very proud of that. So, this toolkit of resources will be available online, so it'll be there to look at, it'll be there for people to be able to interact with and there will also be contacts there so they can ask us what we mean by some things as well so we're hoping that will be an ongoing process of learning as well. And the, the final outcome is just what we were talking about before in the cultural dialogue and understanding <coughs> and actually looking at how we can apply those principles throughout our day to day lives. So the impact will be that there will be more skills, new opportunities for both learners and staff within all of the organisations involved. We're aiming to improve the confidence and self esteem of disadvantaged people, and that is again a way of people being able to say, I've done this, I've achieved this, and I've had this work formally recognised. That in itself brings motivation and understanding, and, it, and the whole project will bring value to the existing work that we're doing here and also in other organisations across Europe. So what we what we mean by under undercovering uncovering best practice is that a lot of this work goes on but not necessarily is known about. As many people said to me, we have no idea what you were doing here at Heavy Arts. And I'm sure that's true for our partners in Europe as well. We tend to, do, when we work within community settings, we tend to just get on with it. But actually, some of that work is incredibly valuable, and this is a way of sharing that work and building on that work and making that work 
grow in different ways. Inspiration and motivation, and you'll hear a little bit soon from Auntie and Bernie, who are both going to speak about how they've been inspired and motivated by the work that we've done with us. And obviously, we're going to have this new European accreditation, which we'll be able to develop further and use. We want to raise the profile of this work within our local community, and that will be an impact <coughs> project. You were all here today saying what we're doing and hearing about it. And we also want to use it as a way of challenging preconceptions of disadvantage and disabled people. We want to be able to show what people can do and what people's contributions really can be. And we want to inspire and influence policy makers. So we hope you're all inspired as well. <laughs> so that's our project. If you'd like to talk to any of us about it, our chief exec's over there, she wrote a bit, so she knows all about it. <laughs> and uh, if there's anything you'd like to know about the project, please, at any point, get in touch. So, thanks. So now, um, I'm going to invite, because we thought part of what our work is about is about sharing our culture, and we've got some fantastic North Indian musicians with us today who are going to perform for us and who are going to uh, do some local tunes for us and then followed, following them will be Andy and Bernie. So I hope you're ready. Yeah. Okay, so can I invite to the stage Jackie Jim and Dad Bob. <laughs> <laughs> When Ali asked her to come along and, and do this, she said, Could we do a couple of quiet songs to start off with? You have no idea how difficult that is. <laughs> 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 to find quiet songs, we don't do quiet songs. We're not going to do. I'm just doing this after. Yeah. I don't, I don't we'll see might that get that a bit trouble with the trace descriptions, uh, people, for this. It's called a walking man, and he's singing it. Great people, because they were all here, uh, living room, the, the pitch and names, and uh, <laughs> the
We are mostly first to start. We are one to the break the blood. I will keep a good to do in the fight and be clear. I was happy that it was born. We are out of choice of thrown. With the bell said, it was not the sunny clear. And the road we are made. What a night and a day. evaluation work a little while ago yeah. yeah with lots of people who had been involved in workshops and shows and performances and creative work here and so what we've done is auntie's going to be the voice of the group and he's going to read out these words they're not necessarily his words but they are words that people have said to us and then auntie's got a little bit of his own words to read as well about his experiences being involved in transnational projects with us. So, have you got it all there, Andy? Yes. You ready to go? Uh, okay, off you go. <coughs> Before becoming the ethnic arts, I was born on the street in Tato. <coughs> I never go out. I thought I was um, going to do with myself. I mean, really what? Would you like some water, Andy? Need that, okay. <laughs> Do a little dance, I love that. I'm going to dance. Give me a 
Sorry, it's not a beer. Not yet, anyway. <laughs> Um, right. Sorry, I lost my Just go from where you're happy. Man. I still feel like no one listen or care really. I didn't didn't know what to do every day. I had the family who who loved me, but nothing really. For myself, I wanted to uh, have a own life. Sometimes I feel just want to die. I couldn't. Say to point in endless days. I didn't think I did things a certain to things because I couldn't see what I feel like inside. I think like when people treat me like I'm stupid. <coughs> Every open is stores when no one else would. Everyone feels Right, the belong here. If you sorry, I'm just too tired. I love if you are if one is family. It is a good environment, but I know. It makes me feel happy. We go places and tell our souls. We meet new people. That, no, oh, that's for the wrong way, I am an artist that's me. I know about so these are your, all your words, aren't yes. you, these ones, are they? Yeah. <clears throat> we go all over, we went to Malta, and we found us, our soul, I used to ever learn, uh, the national culture of... Villa, is it? Is it Malta or Villa? Uh, in... The letter. The letter. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we help to set up a new learning disability theatre core as they didn't have them in Malta. Then we went to Turkey. We went to a school in Berda. Of the streets, kids. I helped to run a drama workshop to show the teacher new skills and what learn disability arts can do. After, 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 they set up a, look, a long table of in the apple trees. And we all sat together and eat some special bread. <laughs> For us, I love their food. Some people didn't like it. Like, but I thought it was truly good. They dance in the garden. I didn't even expect that. They made us feel welcome and good. We like to get out there. We 
no, I can't play. Yeah, yeah, we notice so people making too good to be listened to. It makes you feel good. It's good to be asked what I think. Otherwise, we are nothing. I am an actor that is I am. I can express myself and no worry. I feel happy and pay as a bird. It's my work, sometimes it's hard. It's a challenge and difficult sometimes. But we all help each other and we feel strong and safe. Yeah. We are yeah. No, not we are. We are like a family. Thank you for coming here today and to support our work. So, as I said before, some of those words at the beginning were words that had been said by different people in the group and Andy was speaking for lots of different people, but the second part, the story of the trip to Malta and Turkey, that was Andy's own words. And uh, I'd also like to invite Bernie Gillis to the stage, who has got his perspective on that visit to Turkey. Are you alright, Bernie? Yeah. And, uh, and while I'm talking about the ghosts, I'd like to thank Sheila as well, who's here today and is always supportive of our work as well. I am Bernie, I'm Andy's dad. And this is very short notice. <laughs> anyway, well, I'd like to keep you on your toes. Keep best <laughs> I was asked about escort Andy, my eldest son. <clears throat> In the role of carer during Hedwig's visit to Turkey in July in 2011. Along with Andy and myself, the group consisted of Chris Brown, Chris's mom Lillian, Darren Hutton, Ali and Fran, and two former members of staff, Steve and Chris Bowman. Although looking forward to the visit, I was somewhat skeptical as I had visited Turkey some 10 years earlier. The country had not left a great impression on me. However, I certainly had my eyes opened thanks to the Hedwig visit. My original impression was one of a bustling country in which the holiday maker is constantly subjected to hassle and interference by the locals who just want to sell you something. However, as it turned out, this could not have been further from the truth. The real Turkey, as I was to discover, is on the whole made up of general, peace-loving and hospitable people who could not do enough for the visitor. We were based in the city of Berda, some four hours drive up into the highlands after landing on the coast at Calamon Airport. It's a beautiful country, rich in culture and history. The local religion is Islam, and I have to say that although we were expected to respect their sensibilities, it was no, in no way forced upon us. We were invited to visit a local mosque. We washed our feet at the fountain with the locals and left our shoes at the door. This didn't feel strange as we were just doing what everybody else was doing. The female members of the group were also expected to cover their hair with the shawl, but they were happy to do this. The overall feeling was that this was an honor. They had, they had invited us in. They wanted to share their religion with us. They were very excited and proud of it and wanted us to experience it. The message that I personally got from the visit to the mosque was the polar opposite of what you see in the tabloid press. It was one of a compassionate and tolerant society, one of intelligent, deep thinking people with values that parallel Christian beliefs in terms of respect for the individual and respect for human rights. For me, the visit to the mosque alone would have been worth the long distance that we had travelled. During our stay in Gerda, we crammed many trips and visits in the week we were there. It was a visit to a high school. Although it was not term time, whilst there we got a taste of some of the topics that were being taught. I distinctly remember a large meetings from the First World War on what we in this country would refer to as the Gallipoli campaign, in which Britain and Turkey fought on different sides at great cost in human lives and which Turkey managed to hold combined the armies of Britain, Australia and New Zealand. They're very proud of this. I had a conversation with a history teacher through the medium of sign language, some pidgin English, 
he was able to express to me that although they are proudly achieved, the message portrayed at that school is one of peace and tolerance, and that education is paramount in understanding the futility of war. We visited a centre for people with special needs, of which our hosts were immensely <coughs> proud. The service users had been engaged in numerous activities from the manufacture of souvenirs to everyday useful items such as kitchen trolleys, tower rails, coffee tables, etc. This was having the effect of providing a feeling of worth they were con contributing something. From a personal point of view, probably my favourite visit was to the ruined Roman city of Sagalassos in the Taurus Mountains and its highest altitude amphitheatre in the world, right up on the side of a mountain. There was some fantastic Roman architecture on here. Although some of the group did struggle a bit mobility-wise, it was a, <coughs> it's a developing site still being excavated and they have a way to go regarding accommodating the visitors' needs. But it was just awesome, over the mountains with fantastic vistas in every direction. I'd never heard of it, but what a jewel they have there. If you ever get the chance to go to Sagalassos, even if Roman ruins are just not your thing, I would really <coughs> take it up. You won't be disappointed. The food, everything freshly made, there was no deli belly and burden. We were invited to the home of Omar, one of our Turkish hosts. The children were in traditional dress, I imagine for our benefit, but this just demonstrates how proud they were of their culture. I can still smell the freshly baked fat bread and the fresh herbs and spices. I can still taste the creamy yogurt, slight cousin I've ever had. Spicy chicken and lamb, an absolute Turkish delight. There was lots of fun. People laughed a lot and engaged in conversation through gesture, pen and paper, and one or two translators, and at times even through the medium of dance. The camaraderie of the group was frequently on display. Andy rarely left my side, although he would assist Chris Brown at times for toilet breaks, etc. And I suspect even just have a bit of their own space. They became very close and often shared their private jokes. We visited a fish restaurant. Here, once again, we were expected to remove our footwear, and this time to sit on mats at the tables. It was no hardship for me. However, Chris Brown, a group member who was not the most able in terms of mobility, but whose mental strength and determination was displayed throughout the whole visit to Turkey, was not to be deterred. Chris turned his wheelchair and sat on us, joining in with his wicked sense of humor in overdrive, with his Let's just say, open-ended appetite, he was going to give anything to go. Winding up anyone gullible enough to fall for his partner, I felt that Chris grew as a person whilst in Turkey. Not that he wasn't already a personality, but in Buddha, he was the challenge and revenge. And then there was Darren, a gentleman, mild-mannered, a man of few words, who made his mark with a group on that same afternoon in that same fish restaurant. That afternoon, for reasons known only to himself, Darren, out of the blue, decided to eat a raw chili. I don't know why, but to this day, I don't think I've ever heard a noise like it. The musical note of such high pitch, at first I couldn't believe it come from Darren. When I say a musical note, really it was more of a... <coughs> that, to this day, still sends me into fits of laughter. Thankfully, Darren's okay. We still smile and have a chuckle about it when it's mentioned, so I hope he doesn't mind me mentioning it but I don't imagine he's had a raw chili in a while. The trip highlighted the value of the group members, service users, staff and carers, as both individuals and as a group. Everyone was happy to move in. We took part in workshops with our Swedish friends and Turkish hosts. Andy, Chris and Darren demonstrated their skills as actors. It was just a buzz amongst everyone as we experienced new tastes, smells, sights and cultures together. I barely, barely scratched the surface of what we experienced. All I can say is that the visit had a profound effect on me personally. It gave me a better understanding of the real Turkey and its people. I fell in love with the country and most definitely would go back. As, previ as I've previously mentioned, we were used to and spent some time with a group from Sweden. It was so interesting and informative to be able to compare stories, situations, and attitudes with people from different countries and cultures, but who were basically in the same boat as ourselves. It made me realize that ultimately we're all the same. No matter what our beliefs, no matter what our prejudices, and no matter how much we might want to deny them. I returned home feeling so, so much richer for the experience. The trip gave me a better understanding of the people I was with. I got to know them so much more. It gave me a better understanding of the country I had visited. I hope I haven't bored you too much, but I can honestly say it was an honour and a privilege to have been a member of the Henry Group that visited 
Buddha and Turkey in 2011. I'll keep the memory with me forever. Thanks, guys. Right. So, we've seen some art, we've heard some sounds, we've heard some stories and some writing, and we've heard about some of the experiences and benefits of the work that we do here. Um, so, we're going to say thank you very much for coming today. We're going to hear some more songs from Jackie, Jim and Bob. And we're going to crack open the bubbly. And anyone who'd like a drink, we hope you enjoy one. Um, anyone who doesn't, that's totally fine too. We've got some soft drinks. If anyone would like a cup of tea, we can have a cup of tea too. And we've also got some of uh, Miss Chloe Brown's homemade fantastic cakes. So do help yourselves to one of those as well. And we've got some um, healthy options for food too. So I'm going to draw the program will close. Thank you Jude, thank you everyone else who's contributed and let's hear some more music. Thanks very much. Thank you. I'm not going to get anything quiet. <laughs> <laughs> It's a little low the fact that the book didn't want this up. I'll tell you a secret. He tells lies. Close enough for a bit walk. Thank you. 